What I what I like to talk about here is undeniable, un, undisputed facts, okay? This video will be going over common misconceptions regarding some of the Michael Jackson allegations as presented by YouTubers Ethan and Hila Klein. What's up everyone, it's Edwin and I'm sitting here with Danny Wu, the creator of the new film Square One. In 2005, you were on the witness list. Yeah. I believe that if that one is false, all the rest crumble. I wanted to introduce the story to my channel because I feel like there's this big misconception of you either one way or the other. So um, in order to do this, I thought, wh why not uh, use H3H3's podcast video as a sort of source example of what a lot of people seem to sway towards, you know, and the reasons they use. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let, let it roll. What I, what I like to talk about here is undeniable, un, undisputed facts, okay? I'm not going to talk about conjecture, I'm not going to make assumptions, I'm not going to say stuff that hasn't been proven. I sleep on the bed, sleep on the bed, we're like, no, 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 you no, know, you sleep on, you sleep on the bed. So you, you touched on this a little bit on your movie. The film featured a close-up of Michael holding hands with Gavin Arvizo, who was a cancer victim. Gavin goes to Michael Jackson and says, Hey, like Michael, I want to sleep in your room. It's okay. Like me and my brother wants. It. So it's Gavin and his brother, right? Comes to Michael Jackson and says that, Hey, Michael, like, can we sleep in his? Can we sleep in your room? Michael kind of just was like, I don't know. I don't think it's a good idea. And Michael Jackson's assistant at the time, Frank Casillo, um, also said that I don't think it's a good idea. As I was about to go tell Gavin that he cannot sleep in Michael's room, Michael says, Okay, I have a solution for this. You have to sleep in the room with me. The two children slept on the bed and Michael and I slept on the floor. Michael's like, so like, ask your parents because he thought that the parents would just shut these kids down, right? Kids are like, no, we've already asked them. Like, she wants us to do this. She wants us to stay in your room. Uh -huh. And so um, Michael Jackson's like, okay, you guys can take the bed. Me and Frank Seal sleeps on the floor. So the two kids slept on the bed. That's what he refers to. He wanted, the kid wanted to sleep on the floor. Michael Jackson said, if you love me, you sleep on the bed with your brother and I sleep oh. on the floor. So Michael Jackson slept on the floor with his assistant, Frank Casillo. Okay. So there was never even any like Michael Jackson, just a boy either. What, no. There was like four people total in the room. Yeah. And then he finally said, okay, if you love me, you sleep on the bed. I was like, oh man. So here you can hear the kid saying, I didn't want to sleep on the bed. Oh man. Okay, so now I understand with your context, you're watching the clip. He's saying, you sleep on the bed and like I'll sleep on the floor. Yes. So, so, but like what, I watched this clip and it just cut like this. So, what the original cut is like, I think they kind of explain it. Does Michael let you enjoy the whole premises? There was one night I stood in and I asked him if I could stay in his bedroom. He let me stay in the bedroom. And I was like, Michael, you can stay, sleep on the bed. And he was like, no, 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 you sleep on the bed, sleep on the bed. We were like, no, 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 you sleep on, you sleep on the bed. And then he finally said, okay, if you love me, you sleep on the bed. I was like, oh, man. Michael explained very clearly after this that he slept on the floor with a lot of blankets. And so I finally slept on the bed. But it was fun that night. I slept on the floor. Uh, I wasn't sleeping bag. No, I just, he <laughs> packed the whole mess of blankets on the floor. <laughs> In court, though, they all testified that there were four people in that room. Oh, okay. Like even even, even the, the little boy, even the little boy. Yeah. So this this is this is testimony of this kid saying that that didn't happen. There was no sleepover with Michael. Well, it is a sleepover, but, but like not with him alone. They've never slept alone. Okay. Michael Jackson here is shown manipulating this kid and saying, pressuring "If him. you love me," exactly pressuring him. If you love me, the God that you look up to, you'll sleep. In my bed. Just to cut something like this, that if you just show 10 more seconds of the video that gives it more context, is very unethical in my opinion, and it is very manipulative to his viewers. This is what Michael's doing to this kid. He's going, he on one hand, the kid kind of ratted him out and said, mm -hmm. Michael said, if you love me, you'll stay in my bed. So much of Ethan's like arguments are are so emotion emotion based, and this is this is just objective. It's in the courts. Everybody in the family said that they never slept together in a bed. It almost kind of backfired for the journalist because Michael Jackson had another camera at the same time. And then a rival news station actually picked up the footage and made their rebuttal documentary. What TV journalist Martin Bashir presented was a twisted and edited construction of scandal 
and innuendo, not a true representation of the interviews that actually took place. It's obvious that it's, it's in his eyes. This is what's in his heart. People usually don't ask these questions. That's it. And if, if they do, they don't, they, don't make it, they don't make it in the papers, they don't make it on the interviews, it's all the negative stuff. Stupid rumors. And they and they, they cut story. they cut questions out and they yeah. just like that's they make it that's why that's why he doesn't even do interviews sure, I anymore. Do you think the they twist everything. Twist. From the yeah. moment I met him, I mean I remember how can people be so cool that I read an article it's that I was crying and he goes, uh, it's disgusting. <coughs> well we ain't doing that yet. On Michael's taking his children to the zoo, Bashir says it was no kind of trip for two young children, and everyone could see it but Jackson himself. But what you don't hear is Michael's response. I go to the zoo all the time. I go usually when they close it down. And they told us this would be closed down. How do you explain this? Even as a young boy, mm -hmm. I would never do that with a grown with man an, or a friend. Or with another young boy. I wouldn't do that with anyone. It's just like, as a young kid, I would be horrified to do that with anyone. Yeah. Even my, whatever, anyone. Wait, wait. You know how these Bashir, hey, you know how Bashir zoomed in on, on him holding hands? Yeah. Do that the same that thing because you know because because that's what a mother and, uh, like, and does with a son does. or a father does with a son you know yeah. and they try to make it out to see be something wrong and dirty. I would argue that even if it wasn't set up, which it was, I would say that I don't find anything wrong with it because in the video itself, the child talks about how he saw Michael Jackson as a father figure. I am appalled at the way in which my son has been exploited by Martin Bashir. The relationship that Michael has with my three children is a beautiful, loving father, sons, and daughter one. To my children and me, Michael is a part of our family. In addition, she is considering action against Mr. Bashir for including Gavin in his special without parental consent. He said, come to him, not just Gavin, but Star and Davelin and me and called us his family. He clearly states that he saw Michael Jackson as his father. And I would hold hands with my dad all the time. I lean like head on my yeah, dad, that's... dad's shoulder all the time. Very innocent and beautiful relationship, which everyone has spun it out of control. It's a wish come true. <laughs> For example, to see my children interact with an ideal role, a father role model. And I have never invited them in my room. Really? They always just want to stay. What about if you love me, you'll sleep in my bed? I could take a video of Ethan saying N-word and then putting it out of context. Saying nigger Taking something out of context, man! This is I think, sad! I have to add to that, I think it's also during that period of time, YouTube, as a general whole, was more mature as a society. Like, we wanted to see people make fun of, right? But then as, like, YouTube grows, that kind of becomes more biased, and people are kind of now more leaning towards um, videos that are more objective and show both sides, you know, you can pick a side But it's better to like kind of show both sides of the picture yeah. before you do that and to keep this this um, This rambling of just Piling on to nonsense, you know, it will rub people the wrong way I feel like it was absolutely credible and, and people who are decrying the documentary <clears throat> are protesting it and out of protest, are not watching it. I find that ironic because they're so obsessed with research. When I first started reading about the other side of the arguments about Michael Jackson being guilty, I was swayed to that. I was swayed in that direction. I thought they had some very good arguments. Yeah. And um, so I was still, I still liked his music. But at the same time, at that point, I was like, okay, this guy's probably guilty. It it's wasn't until I started doing intensive research, though, that I started seeing that well, these arguments are actually pretty bad and they're all taken out of context, you know, yeah. to fit one's own narrative. A news clip of Mark Garagos, who initially represented Michael in 2003 in the criminal case, is manipulated to appear as if he's threatening an accuser after Michael's arrest. We will land on you like a ton of bricks. We will land on you like a hammer. If you do anything to besmirch this man's reputation, anything to intrude on his privacy in any way that's actionable, we will unleash a legal torrent like you've never seen. In fact, he was talking about a completely different legal case in which he and Michael were secretly videotaped on board a charter aircraft. Disclosed that those two video cameras, which also apparently had audio on them, were surreptitiously placed in there, were recording attorney-client conversations. You see the whole family 
in the documentary. They all give their perspective. Oh, yeah. Michael called us every night for two hours. Michael was sending us faxes every day. Here's the facts. Let's get the facts out of the way. Michael Jackson wrote stuff like that to everyone. I've been to Taj Jackson's house. Michael Jackson would write letters to fans. You know, he would have pen pals going back and forth saying, I love you, Uncle Doodoo, stuff like that. So the facts, Matt, the facts don't mean anything. Do these notes sound like him grooming this family? No, no. You've got some, we've got yeah, some of the my, notes here. I have these, my brothers have these, you know. If, if he thought his words could help you or inspire you, he would write you a letter. It's Uncle Duda. He calls himself Uncle Duda, of yeah, course. Yeah, he called himself Uncle Duda to us a lot. Wade, now Wade is super interesting because he was with Michael Jackson, and I say with because they were in a relationship um, for seven years. And to say that Wade Wapson had a relationship with Michael Jackson for seven years is just ludicrous because, one, the timing just doesn't add up because Wade Wapson visited Michael Jackson once and he went back to Australia, right? And then he moved back to L.A., and that's when... Um, the supposed relationship happened. Well, there's a problem. When he came back to LA, according to his court testimony, according to his depositions from 2005 and to now, all corroborated, he's only been to Neverland four times while Michael Jackson was present. So how are you gonna have a relationship with someone when you've been to his house four times? Now to add on to that, during this period of time, Wade Robson was also, was also in a relationship with Michael Jackson's niece. Maddie Jackson. We met at a photo shoot with my uncle Michael. Everything went really well. We all hung out together. We were friends. Next thing I knew, um, he had asked my uncle Michael if he could get to know me better. He had started to develop a little crush. So from 10 to 20, Wade Robson was having like a, a very age appropriate relationship with a female. Uh, a girl that Michael Jackson basically set them up with. He asked my uncle Michael if he would arrange a situation where we could get to know each other better. So my uncle did that. He had us uh, both meet at the ranch. So at the same time, he's having another relationship with Michael Jackson. I'm sorry, but when you're that young, you can't, you just, you're not that sneaky. And, um, he's, a, so he's cheating on Brandy Jackson with his, his... He's cheating on Brandy Jackson with Michael Jackson while only going to Neverland four times with Michael Jackson there. And even to his own account, Michael Jackson pulled away from him uh, or he pulled away from Michael Jackson like as the time went on. So the, the math just doesn't add up to have this perfect relationship that he painted of them together. Well, according to Ethan, Michael would always say to them, repeat to them, if we, if you ever tell anyone about this or we ever get caught, I'm going to go to jail for life. I'm going to be over. My whole career is going to be over and you're going to go to jail for life. Mm -hmm. When you go into these court cases, uh, the prosecution is going to want to cross-examine you as a witness, you know, especially because Wade Robson was the star witness, as the, the Michael Jackson's attorney called him, you know, Tom Mesero. When I went to Danny's premiere, I, I got a little clip of him trying to explain cross-examination because I feel like the general public just doesn't understand just how that works. Well, Wade Robson was cross-examined by a superb lawyer named Ron Zonin, who was one of the best prosecutors I've ever faced. He knew the facts. And he went after Wade with a passion, tried to do everything he could do to get him to change his testimony, tried to get him to knock him off balance, to make him look non-credible. And Wade stood his ground and, in my opinion, stuck with the truth and did a fantastic job. You met Wade as well? Because he was on your side, right? I called Wade as my witness. Oh, okay. Wade yeah. was the first witness I called in the defense case in defense of Michael Jackson. I met with him for hours in Neverland I talked to his, his mother, I talked to his sister, and I called them as witnesses too. And all of them were very strong witnesses for Michael Jackson. Wade was intelligent, he was articulate, he was personable, he was likable, and he was very powerful in his defense of Michael Jackson. He said nothing improper happened. The amount of defending, and not just, well, it's one thing to defend Michael Jackson, but there's, there's an active campaign, it's this really vicious. Mm -hmm. Very vicious people who do not like differing opinions. In a way, it is true because that there are a small group of people who are very vicious about okay. defending Michael Jackson, who um, is very easily offended by people who would just go out the way to like just kill your argument. Uh -huh. But there's a very good group of people on Twitter like defending Michael Jackson who are open to rational discourse. Sure. And I'm, I would also argue that you could say... Um, the same, if not way more, about the people on the other side okay. who would not take any arguments about 
um, if Michael Jackson was innocent or not. Because sure. these people have a history okay. going after um, Michael Jackson fans defending them. So just as there might be some vicious people defending Michael Jackson, there's definitely vicious people that are against Michael Jackson. Yeah, I would, I could reasonably say that there are probably more viciously, uh, just vicious wise, uh, with evil ten intent. E even so, I feel like it's been a very prominent stereotype to just say things about Michael Jackson, you know, in the negative light, exactly. without properly even knowing the allegations themselves or, or the victims' names. You just kind of like blanketly make jokes about him, you know, since South Park and all that stuff. Hey, you want to play with me? Come on, let's climb the tree. Come on, climb the tree, climb the tree. I feel like, especially for us, we grew up like in the early 2000s, late 90s, and um, people back then were definitely making fun of Michael Jackson in school oh, yeah. and stuff like that. I grew up with like around Michael Jackson jokes. This lady dies and goes to heaven, but before she dies, uh, Angel comes down and says, you get one wish. And she said, you know what, I had a good life and everything, so I wish all the kids in the world were safe. Five minutes later, Michael Jackson dies. <laughs> <laughs> it was accepted. It didn't hurt anybody's feelings no. because nobody was connected. Well, whatever. Everyone has to make those jokes kind of fit in. I'm not a jacko. I'm Jackson. I have a heart and I have feelings. I feel that when you do that to me. It's not nice. Don't do it. I'm not a wacko. People who are decrying the documentary <clears throat> are protesting it. And out of protest are not watching it. I find that ironic because they're so obsessed with research. Most people who are Michael Jackson fans have seen the documentary. Yeah. Right? We've gone over it, but on the other hand, what uh, people on the other side don't see is that uh, the point isn't we don't find these people credible. The point is that these two people have been suing the Michael Jackson estate since 2013 for hundreds of millions of dollars. And in, in their lawsuits, that generated many depositions. And a lot of people have been finding inconsistencies in the documents before *Leaving Neverland* even came out. You know, these were these case, these court cases were thrown out of court, right? Uh, the judge even said that no rational jury should believe Wade Robson's um, accounts. Uh -huh. So to say that the fans are just being blind about it and that we're not watching the documentary, I would argue that it's actually quite the contrary. And contrary, and you should be watching. You should be. Watching the documentary, and um, in addition to walking, watching the documentary, also read about the other side of the stories and read about the court documents. See, what I'm, what, I feel like he's trying to pick on a small minority because I have seen on Twitter some people say that, oh, I don't want to watch that. Oh, I've seen clips of it, but it's mm -hmm. like, of course, there's gonna be some people that don't watch the documentary. Just like there's gonna be some people that don't want to research the other side, you know. Mm -hmm. But so, so speak to the people that have watched it. Speak to the people that have seen everything, you know? Otherwise, what's really the, the point of engaging a conversation on such a big platform with such a 100% sureness, I guess? Well, and, yeah. and a lot of the stuff I hear people saying is stuff like, oh, they already testified under oath and now they changed their mind because they're getting paid from HBO. And somebody who says that is somebody who clearly hasn't watched the documentary because that's one of the main thrusts of the documentary right. is that exploring was, yeah. how can you testify under oath several times for Michael Jackson and then all of a sudden come out so hard against him. This is not an argument that I use, but a lot of the fans argue that they've testified under oath right. that Michael Jackson never touched him, so now they're changing their story. You know why they've done that though, don't you? And you know why they've said that they've done that, which is that they are both now older and they're fathers and they felt under pressure when they were giving their evidence previously and now they feel somewhat different because they've got their own children and they feel that they need to speak out. Oh, I'm, I'm talking about the 2016 deposition, so it's, it's more recent. I, I, get, I get where people are coming from and they say that, oh, that's such a weak argument. Yeah. But uh, what I'm saying is that um, since 2013, since Wade Robson came out with his lawsuit, and since Jamie Savechuk was served um, with a $24 million lawsuit to his family business, and then followed Wade Robson's uh, footsteps in suing Michael Jackson, in their lawsuits, there has, they, it, I think it created thousands of um, deposition pages that the fans have just combed through every page. And there have been numerous inconsistencies that have been found in these documents okay. that contradict what they're saying now, what they have said in the past, what they have said within the documents. So um, when we talk about the court cases, it's not about the 2005 per se, but it's more about um, their, recent, their recent lawsuit. I'm not saying he did it, but Let's be honest with our folks. Michael Jackson. 
slept in a bed with young kids every night without parents present. Just use your brain, people. One of the things that Ethan says throughout this whole podcast is use your brain, people. Uh, Just use your brain. As if it's a given that you sleep with a kid, you're obviously going to do some inappropriate things. And mm -hmm. I don't know, I really find that, objectively speaking, that's kind of a strange way to sell your argument. I have a thought experiment that I would always pose to myself that always, uh, you know, edged me towards he did it. And that thought experiment is very simple. Imagine a man, any man, sleeping in bed with a young child, a young boy, every night for 30 days straight with no parent. What are the chances, I ask you, what are the percent chances that he didn't? touch that little boy in an appropriate way. And I would think hard on that, and I would say, you know, I have to say, in all honesty, using my brain and my common sense, forgetting about all the mysticism and everything, it's zero. Mm. It's zero percent. He just said, imagine a man, any man, sleeping with a boy for 30 days and nothing happened. Any man, I know that in my heart, I would never do that. So he's saying any man, it could be you, it could be me, it could be any man. <laughs> Why, why, why is that a given? Why, why is it a given that any man with a, with a younger man would do anything with them? That doesn't make any, you know, the younger kid, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's, that's weird. His thought experiment that makes no sense to me. Yeah. And also, none of the sleepovers were ever confirmed. We're taking the people's words oh, for it. Well, right? Check us out. Wait, no, hold on. So, again, this is just the beginning of the rabbit hole. I've got a lot of things to share. Um. So that was a thought experiment that always kind of pushed me towards, you know what, I think he probably did do it. I feel like this speaks more about Ethan than Michael Jackson in a way. The thing is, okay, and the thing is because in this whole podcast, he says that he's bringing undisputable facts, like no assumptions, it's all facts, but he keeps doing this weird like thought experiments, you know, where he's like, J just imagine this. So it, it's a really weird kind of like putting you in a, in, a, in a way of thinking where it sounds ridiculous to combat it, you know? Like, I almost feel bad at, like, putting on the spot here because he's not really putting facts against anything. He's just putting a bunch of, like, mm -hmm. hypo hypothetical situations. As an exercise, think about the stuff Michael Jackson did, but if it was just a random guy, like your neighbor. Mm -hmm. It's so gross. Did your neighbor hang out on, on children's hospitals and donate millions of dollars? Oh, not maybe not millions, but I, I've Billions, seen that. Millions, hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions? Yes. Well, to different hospitals yes. uh, before each tour stop, exactly. right? Like all the humanitarian stuff that gets often overlooked. It's like he's not just any random neighbor. People want to just... Uh, that, that whole neighbor um, thought experiment is so common, and I feel like it's... I don't know. If, I feel like it makes your mind go to a dark place for what reason, you know? Why can't your neighbor be Mr. Rogers? Isn't he a good guy? <laughs> Please, won't you be my neighbor? Anyway, I feel like that's one of the weakest arguments that the haters can use, that if he's someone else, that he would be locked up. I feel like, because they admit that they were fans of the music, so they probably wouldn't call themselves haters. They're like, oh, you're dismissing argument. But they, the reason why I want to go through this video is because they use all the basic hater arguments. Yes. It, and the thing also is that they use a very ethnocentric point of view, right? If you're different, then it's bad. Oh, right? yeah. So the documentary is about is the best I've seen about the su and not about Michael Jackson, not about the survivors, but about abuse and how it happens. I actually agree with Ethan on this. I, de I think it, the documentary was a great, it was a great film about child abuse and, and grooming, you know? However, when you put Michael Jackson into the equation, it, it felt... It felt different. Another thing with the whole grooming article is that Michael Jackson was someone who spent time with like hundreds of kids and hundreds of adults who have who've had similar experiences to these kids. You know, Chris Tucker would talk about Michael just giving him a TV when he asks. He was just nice, man. I would go to Neverland and I would say I like something. He would give it to me. I said, Michael, I like that big screen TV. He was like, you like it, Chris? I said, yeah, I like it. He said, do you love it? I said, I love it. Next day I go home, Michael would send the TV to my house. I said, Michael, thank you. Eric Carter said the same thing. Yeah, and then... Michael gave away things. Michael Jackson gave me his jacket, so I always like to give. Other stuff like that. Are they being groomed, you know? Or is that just how he is as a person? That's a question that you have to ask. It, it all depends on the sinister context you put into it, right? Because yeah. like, like I said, like with the whole neighbor uh, example, your neighbor could be the best person ever, but when you say, oh, if your neighbor is bad, would you let your kid... But if your neighbor is good, would you let... I don't know. Of course, and to add to that, let's say if we take someone like Ethan, and then now we see him gifting a bunch of stuff to a child, that is alarming because that is not a normal behavior, you know. But with Michael Jackson, he does that with everyone. Yeah, he, and he, he did it since the beginning. He's yes. very young. You right? see, you see him with Jenny Winans, letting people just. 
come into his house, stay over, gifting them stuff, letting them buy whatever they Complete, want. Complete like like fangirls, just letting them into the Neverland. Yeah. You know? There's never been a pop star like him. Just loved by the whole world. Right. Like seriously, everywhere. Well, do you think he was loved by the whole world? <laughs> uh, I think from our earlier conversations, I would definitely argue that um, he was not loved by the whole world. You know, growing up, we saw one of the, my first memories of Michael Jackson was a scary movie, I think three. And in it, you know, there's an impersonator there. His nose is falling off. He's doing all the dance moves. He's with kids. Another memory I had was Stout Park, obviously, Michael on his tree. You know, just in schoolyards in general, like the vibe was to make fun of Michael That's Jackson. Some dark love, you know? Exactly. And um, it wasn't until 2009 when Michael Jackson passed away where it, the tide kind of went the other way. Yeah. I saw um, there's this classic YouTuber that made a song. Michael Jackson is dead. No, you never gave a shit. So why are you pretending you motherfucking hypocrites? Michael Jackson's such a freak. You'd hear it a thousand times a week on every. Michael Jackson, as shown throughout the documentary, was very particular. He found weak families. He yeah. found families with weak bonds. That's not true. There's so many more families that he helped out in the process. So many there's, more people that have spoken there's, up there's, for him. There's hundreds of families that we know of uh, that Michael Jackson had similar relationships with. Yeah, rich, and, and poor. None of the, all the families, they still support him to this day. Yeah. And all these four accusers, that seems like a big number for accusers, but what do they have all in common? Never went to the police. All went to civil lawsuits. Uh, the go went to civil lawyers to file a lawsuit against Michael Jackson. So, you know, at the very least, there is a question mark. Michael would call them to their house every day, and he would talk to the mom too for long times. Mm -hmm. And eventually, he got her to move here with yeah. Wade and yeah. the sister. And basically, this whole pa family broke up over this destroyed. whole thing. Absolutely destroyed the family. The dad was left back. They all abandoned him, and he later committed suicide. What I find interesting is is how they are so against people who say do research, but they're taking these people's word as gospel. You know, did did Michael Jackson buy these people a house and make them move to LA? Right. And he bought one of them a house. No, not at all. So where is this coming from? <laughs> Because I'm just, I'm not, I just played a bold card. I just said that we shouldn't believe these people as gospel, so why not? So, again, Joy Robson, she did an interview. They asked her why she moved to LA, so Hollywood. You came from Australia. Te okay, tell us why you came from Australia and Hollywood. how did it go? Oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. Yeah. <laughs> it just felt right. <laughs> so you packed your bags and you came out. As I say, six suitcases and a dream. And two of my children, my eldest son decided not to come. He was in college. And I thought it was going to be this wonderful adventure and that we'd be superstars within a year and be traveling. Well, you have forth. to think that way or it would yeah. be very hard Everybody to move. Everybody does. Right. Yeah. From and, Australia yeah, to eight, eight years later, we were still, still trying to pay rent. <laughs> she definitely was not the mum that I grew up with at that point. It wasn't so much about the family anymore. You know, it was it was about getting over there, starting this new opportunity for for Wade, which you know in reality was opportunity for mum as well. And I remember my dad just saying, "Please don't leave," to me. But even in the movie, they acknowledged that when they got to like LA, Michael Jackson wasn't paying for their like house. Right. You know, they were complaining that they were living in a small apartment and stuff like that. So to say that Michael Jackson was grooming them during that time, that contradicts their own um, story that uh, Michael Jackson had a seven year relationship with Wade Robson. It's like, but at the same time, you're talking about how Michael Jackson is pulling away from it's, you. It's a lot of mental gymnastics, which is interesting because there's this constant, like when you watch Ethan's podcast here, he's constantly asking you to think like, okay, just do a little thought experiment. He says this like several times. So that's what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to think like, so is Michael Jackson pulling away from them or is he grooming them? So in the movie also, I don't know if you remember this, but they were talking about how Wade Robson was upset that Michael Jackson didn't call him. Right, when Michael yeah. Jackson was on tour and didn't call him. But if he calls him, that's grooming. If he doesn't call him, that's being mean. Right. There's so, just, there's, there's, 
there's a weird weird dilemma where there's no there's no right. It's a catch twenty two situation for Michael Jackson, which um, yeah, it's very unfortunate because people only want to look at this dark side here. All of the boys he befriended were like really handsome models. One was a TV commercial. Yeah. One was a dance. Like these were really handsome, beautiful young boys, yeah. right? Not fat boys. Not ugly boys. Not little girls. It's very freaking true. Why? Think about the, uh, some other kids. Dave Dave. Is Dave Dave a motto? Metaphorically, he was almost like a father that I never had. He's always been nothing but a great friend, not just to me, to my old, fa my old family. Why did he call it too? We grew up with him literally since he was three and I was five, and so being around him was just normal. He was just uh, Michael, he was just our friend. Adults. Slept in his room as well. Because I've been there. When his nephews were there, and we all were in the bed watching television, there was nothing abnormal about it. There was no touchy feeling going on. We laughed like children. They were little girls. Other people had the exact same right. experiences who slept in his bed. See, I think this kind of statement that Ethan is saying kind of shows just how he's cherry picking on specific cases and only the negative ones. He's choosing not to look at the other hundreds of families. What also makes me uncomfortable is, is the whole like joking aspect. Like it doesn't make sense to like go super hard on, on shaming it, right? Like, oh, he's disgusting. But also- I just put this on <laughs> and I'm like, oh, thank God. There's people out there that are still sane. <laughs> I was a good pedophile too, huh? I built a whole amusement park and a candy store, and I say, "You kids like candy?" And they'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, we like it." I'm like, "Yeah, you like it? Yeah, okay, yeah." Well, tell your mom to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Michael wanted the kid to immediately move in for a year. Right. He asked the mom to leave the kid with him That's for a year. That's an undisputed fact, by the way. Why is she saying that Michael Jackson wanted the kid to move in for a year? Who's that? Who's she talking about? I have no idea, man. I think they're just like confusing a lot of the cases together okay. with some of their all made up imagination. But they're saying undisputed facts. See, this is why it's so dangerous. They're, 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 oh. The hallway leading to Jackson's bedroom was a serious security zone covered by video and wired for sound so that the steps of anyone approaching would make ding dong sounds. Because he would have maids all over Neverland, right? So when someone approaches his room and about to enter, like there would be a doorbell sound that happens inside the house. So it's like a doorbell. So his room is like a house, you're saying? His room is a house. Yeah. His room is bigger than my house. Is that, you know, they go, oh, you slept in the same bedroom as him. It's like, I don't think you understand. Michael Jackson's bedroom is two stories. <laughs> and it has like, like three bathrooms and this and that. So when I slept in his bedroom, yeah, but you have to understand the whole scenario. There was a fan who snuck into his room for about like a week, stayed in his closet, only left at nighttime to go get food. Whoa, this is from Macaulay Culkin's dad's book. And this, is, this has been corroborated in other stories as well. So that after, I think this was around in 1988. So after that, that is when he went and got an alarm. Okay, see that, I think that adds so much more important context because I, I, like, I think to a normal person like me, like, yeah, okay, he's got a huge room that's the size of a damn house, but like, why, why do you add alarm? You still already have a huge property, but like obviously he let so many people in and like exactly. that's a little creepy to have someone living in your closet for a week. Yeah, and even if that didn't happen, it's like it's normal for a lot of celebrities to sure. have alarms in their room. Well, especially because he let everybody in. Exactly. How many people he had at Neverland at the time that you know of after watching Square One, how easily he lets people into his life. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I, that point is a good one because I've been doing so much research myself sometimes you kind of forget about things and uh, that is actually one of the reasons he had an alarm set it yeah. and again people would used to you know brandy jackson told me this brandy told me that people would literally just like parachute their way in to michael jackson's house really yeah with the parachute that's gotta be publicized there's gotta be a story about that online there's right? a video there is a video the see video, that's what i'm saying the video, the video is gonna play right now It's my genuine reaction here. This is crazy. Right. But you don't really pay $25 million when you're not guilty. I wouldn't. Why did you settle the case? And, and it looks to everyone as if you paid a huge amount of money. That's, most of that's to get folklore. Silence. 
I talk to my lawyers and I said, can you guarantee me that justice will prevail? And they said, Michael, we cannot guarantee you that a judge or a jury will do anything. And with that, I was like catatonic. I was outraged. How much money? Totally was it? outraged. So what I said, I have got to do something to get out from under this nightmare. We got together again with my advisors, and they advised me. It was hands down a unanimous decision. Resolve the case. This could be something that could go on for seven years. How much money? So let's was get it? it behind us. CBS News has obtained a taped phone conversation. The voices are purportedly the father of the 13 year old boy who is accusing Michael Jackson of molesting him and the boy's stepfather. This is the attorney I found. I mean, I interviewed several and I picked the nastiest son of a bitch I can find. Once I make that phone call, this guy is just going to destroy everybody in sight in any devious, nasty, cruel way that he can do it. And I've given him full authority to do that. <laughs> It'll be a, a massacre if I don't get what I want. If I go through with this, I win big time. I will get everything I want, and they will be, to they will be destroyed forever. They will be destroyed. June is going to lose Jordy. She will have no right to ever see him again. Yeah. That's a fact, Dave. That's what's going that help Michael's career will be over. Does that help Jordan? Michael's career will be over. And does that help Jordan? That's irrelevant to me. The conversation was taped in July before the police began their investigation. I always find it so interesting how people say, well, well what would he pay money if he's not guilty? Of course, he was one of the busiest, uh, most sued celebrities alive. Michael was no stranger to lawsuits, and unfortunately for many celebrities, lawsuits and scandals are a part of life whether the accusations are legitimate or not. I get sued probably 15 times a year. Objection. Every are we going to have this is uh, objection. Says I'm objection. From the I have an star. objection. I have an objection. Well, that's how it that's how I did it. It may be the most famous star in the world. He's certainly one of the richest and that makes Michael Jackson a prime target for lawsuits. I believe I am Annie from Smooth Criminal. Michael Jackson's alleged son has just gone public. The fact that he paid, I don't know that that makes him guilty, you know? I, I feel like, if anything, why would you take money from someone that you're claiming violated your, your child? I feel like that's... Uh, yeah. Evan, uh, instead of going straight to the police, as you would expect a parent to do if their child had uh, said that they'd been abused, he instead goes directly to Michael Jackson and his legal team and starts demanding $20 million. But Evan had a desire to be a filmmaker. He was trying to get the money so he could make a movie. But again, I, I go into like extreme details of that in my documentary. Yeah, so. and, and if you, please guys, watch Square One and like you get to know actual details, not just brief overviews and thought experiments like that, you know, H3H3 H3 like to it's, collaborate on. Exactly, and I like to, go into these cases with an open mind, right? I went into it like trying to convince, like being in the mindset that Michael Jackson's guilty. Right. right? Because let's be honest, it's pretty, it looks bad on yeah, the surface. It's level. easy to believe. And again, it's like it, on it's the surface. It's okay as well. On the surface, it looks really, really, really bad for him, of course, you know? Yeah. Like there's, there's no denying that Michael Jackson was very out there. I mean, there isn't a lot of grown men that hang out with kids and like, like to have fun with kids. Exactly. And like, had donate, water balloon fights. You yeah, know? donate millions of dollars to, to kids' foundations and all, all this stuff. Like, who who else does that kind of thing? You know, who else to, who else visits children's hospitals right before they go on tour? Like yeah. to to sign autographs, get free his toys, tour money to yeah. hospitals, all of the tour money. Yeah, exactly. The fact that the documentary is one sided, it's like yeah, that's kind of like the only option. I well, mean, that argument does, for me doesn't make any sense because. And also, what would it help if, what, they, they ask uh, Michael's family what yeah. they think? We already know what they yeah, think. Yeah, he's not guilty. What is, what is the journalistic value of, in, uh, of interviewing someone who says, well, Michael was a really nice guy and he'd never do anything to a child? People say they want to see the other side is because, again, like I uh, talked about earlier, these two people have been suing the Michael Jackson estate for hundreds of millions of dollars since 2013. And that generated thousands and thousands of pages of um, deposition papers. So is it okay to um, let people know about the existence of the lawsuit? You know, I feel like that's a... That's I guess a that would be to like it's the other side, just to say, hey, this exists, by the way. You, you know, know, just to say that this is ongoing and they're suing the Jackson State for money. Uh, as which the they, documentary. Which they completely ignore in the documentary. Right. 
which you know I feel that not only makes it one-sided that makes it manipulatively one-sided right to and, leave stuff like that and place. also of course they have their family it's important to have the family I think that's those are great potential corroborations but like you know people like Brandy Jackson who was dating Wade exactly for, on and off for quite a while he was always either at my house or I was at his house our families were friends his mother was friends with my mother and this went on for years everything was fine until he became about 17 18 years old and I started to see his behavior change mm -hmm. um, and that's when he started to cheat if she dated him during that time I think that would be a very important corroborate or right. just point of view people like Brett Barnes, Macaulay Culkin, Mac um, Corey Feldman well, because they were mentioned too they Brett were Barnes and Macaulay people Culkin. exactly these were people who were mentioned Macaulay and Brett Barnes especially they were people who were mentioned in the documentary this was the first time I came up against the new friend, Macaulay Culkin. Macaulay was where I was, you know, at my previous trips, right by Michael's side. Every 12 months, there was a new boy in his life. Because I would keep coming up against scenarios where there was another boy. I remember it being particularly hard with Brett because I found out and I knew that he was Australian. Oh, it's a new Australian boy. So, you know, maybe you hear them out too if you're gonna put them in the documentary. It would just feel like the ethically correct thing to do. It, it would only make sense to include them in something that you're gonna mention them in, or just not mention them. It could have been very easy to not mention Macaulay Culkin or Brett Barnes, but it did it anyway without letting them know. Right, you know, he wants to add them in to fit their narrative. Right. But then he can't let them speak because that would destroy their narrative, so... Or, or how do we know? Uh, if that's not true, Dan Reed, why don't, you, why don't you include them? If that's, you know, you're leaving that space for criticism. So Oprah asked him, well, why did you sue him? You know, like, like, what, how, isn't it, isn't that proof that it's about money? And he says, well, it's the only way I could get them to listen to me. I want an opportunity to reprocess that experience. Mm -hmm. I want to get on the stand again, because now I'm able to tell the truth. These people have their lawsuits um, thrown out, are appealing it, are going through hoops of fire to kind of just be able to sue Michael Jackson's estate for hundreds of millions of dollars. At the same time, you must also remember that Wade Robson went to the estate um, and tried, tried, he tried to file his um, lawsuit, um, what's, it, what's the word for it, under, under seal. He tried to file his lawsuit under seal. The case was thrown out not on its merits, but on the statute of limitation. There's actually numerous reasons why he sued out. There was actually not just one lawsuit, right? There's also a credit claim, creditor's claim. And uh, Wade Robson was perjuring himself so hard in his lawsuits. Like, that's how, that's why it was got thrown out, you know? Nothing to do with statute of limitations? There was a part of it being to do with statute of limitations being uh, thrown out in the first place. But the reason that the appeals never worked is because of the other factors. Oh, okay, okay. When I go to see a doctor and he tells me something, I trust him, you know, I believe what he's saying. You're only he hearing one side, Elo, from that doctor. <laughs> well, and what's wrong with the documentary? I mean, a documentary is a source of information as much as a book, a movie, a magazine, I mean... That's also not true, though. It's like, sometimes you go to the doctor and you're like, I kind of want to get a second opinion on that. I really felt bad for you right there. I'm like, really? You're going to listen to a doctor just because you got to get a degree? Like, there's been times when I go to a doctor, I'm like, okay, let me go to Google next. You know, like, yeah. you mean... Or you just get a multiple, like... Or second you, opinion. Yeah, second opinion. A, mo a lot of NBA players do that. And um, it's not to say that you should disbelieve the doctor every time. Of course, time. Not. Of of course, course. Not. But it's like when they come up with ridiculous statements, you're kind of just like, maybe I kind of want to see some other specialists as well. Different patients, different kind of doctors. And it's a completely different concept. I just don't well. think that's a good comparison at all to say like, well, you know, if a doctor's good, why would this documentary not be good? Not all documentaries are created equal. You know? or it's like when a teacher tells you that like you're worthless. It's like, oh, I'm just going to trust that teacher. There's a lot of hyperbole here. It's like hyperbole. A hyperbole. It's hyperbole. It's hyperbole. 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 It's pronounced hyperbole. 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 Exaggerated statements, bro. Hyperbole. It's pronounced hyperbole. It's pronounced hyperbole. 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 Well. <laughs> <laughs> HBO was not a network that puts out uh, uh, tabloids. It's like a movement now where anti. Oh, you, you just believe what you what people tell you. It's like or well, no, it's it's a movement of like uh, oh. 
oh, that's cute. You actually believe that? Yeah. Uh, Just because a distribution like HBO is publishing it, all of a sudden it's credible and you just believe what people tell you. It's an appeal to authority, really. Yeah, you know, that's like, exactly what it is. They're, they're, they're HBO, so they must be correct. Right. right. Logical fallacy, right. Yeah. It's like it's like someone were to say, oh, well, Edward, everyone's just a YouTuber, don't trust them. But, oh, once I get like a big company to back me up, all of a sudden, I'm, that's not how it works, you know. It's sad that they're saying it on YouTube. So we should so. be living in a hierarchy where only the top, their views matter. Right, yeah, and, and honestly, they're on YouTube right now, so I don't even know why I'm talking about them. Exactly. Wait. This movie received 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. Great, more appeal and to authority. More appeal to authority, yeah. exactly. Because yeah. it has 97% because of critics, right? We should listen to corporations <laughs> over the audience. It's also 1,800 people versus 92. Yeah. Like a first time YouTuber makes one video, gets one like, that's 100% likes. You got 92% likes, so theirs is better than yours. And among top critics, it has 100%. Even if these film critics say that it's so good, Film critics are not experts. Film critics don't know much background. Film critics are just there to critique the film. And guess what? It's it's a decent film, like we said. But documentary wise, I'm not I'm not so sure. There's not much to really solidify much of it. You know, there's no solid evidence, uh, like objectively speaking, of course. I understand that you stayed then two different weekends at Neverland on that trip. Is that right? Yes. And then in between you and your kids and your husband and your parents all went on tourist trip to the Grand Canyon? Yes. On the other end, what you are defending is potentially one of the most prolific child predators in, that, that ever lived. Yeah, that has done some of the most so, horrific So if, if you're willing to go in public and defend potentially one of the, someone who's committed the most heinous crime you can imagine, one of the most heinous crimes you can imagine, I think you owe it to yourself to do as much research as you can and that unfortunately I hate to tell you includes watching this documentary um, that has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes right what he said right there is ironically kind of what he called Michael Jackson defenders he said that they are vicious people that don't like differing opinions but he's essentially right now saying that by by wanting to explain the other side you're supporting the most prolific, prolific child predators exactly. so it, it's like kind of Bizarre, and, and that, that's uncomfortable. So it kind of puts you in a position like, whoa, whoa, should I be supporting Michael Jackson? Should I even look at these details? Or should I just listen to Ethan? Because I don't want to risk being called a child predators supporter, you know? It's, exactly. a, it's a weird th thing. Hit me with that, mm -hmm. uh, make a change, would you? Oh no, there we go. Ooh, I'm gonna touch a kid for once in my life. Jamoon, it's gonna feel real good. Gotta Shamon. touch his penis. Hey! Like it doesn't matter where you stand on this whole issue. I, I wonder who finds that like. It's like at the same. He's trying to make it. He's telling telling people to make this a serious. He's telling people this is a take, serious. Take conflict. it seriously. Take it seriously. And then he like does something like this. I just I don't know. I want to sleep with you <laughs> all night. I want to touch your penis. All night, oh, don't boy. ever tell your parents <laughs> ever. I like that tight little but I'm just baffled how this is like exciting to to like make make jokes about like touching little children. I want to <laughs> rock with your dick out all night. Don't ever tell anybody what happened ever right but not only that he's also talking about how um it's bad that the way that some mj fans are responding to it because it might make other victims not want to come out imagine yeah. you're one of his victims watching this and but you're already how would grappling. you ever come out when yeah. this is the response it's like but at the same time can you imagine being a victim of anything right and seeing someone mock it in this way i'm looking at myself <laughs> in the mirror Ooh. There's a naked little boy behind me. Ooh. Like, e even if we want to play the thought experiment that Ethan and Hila are, are trying to sell us. The response they're getting from the whole world. Discouraging. It's really discouraging other people Absolutely. to come out. But then you see them completely mocking, like, uh, um, just abuse like that, like, of course. Like, imagine being touched by a, a popular singer and then you see someone saying, Oh my god, this should be taken seriously. Also, let me mock one of the most popular songs and pretend I'm the one touching you. Like, what? Special guest Michael Jackson, everybody. <laughs> Give a round of applause. When I make my documentary, I want people to like watch it who are neutrals. It's like I'm not trying to 
four speed you that you know like yeah that, that's an issue too like maybe I'm, I'm taking ethan a little too seriously here because they obviously he's obviously based in comedy but it's like more than an hour of this entire podcast is serious so it's like pick a lane i've never talked about michael jackson on my channel like on a full proper video which is why i kind of thought well why don't i i have balance some thoughts with him on based on ethan's video and then maybe in the future i can do another video on michael jackson i uh, hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> it's uh, it's a bit all over the place but we tried uh i i highly recommend you guys seriously um just research things yourself or, or definitely start at square one not to be punny but <laughs> you know square one's the movie movie name and it's that's why you named it Square One, right? Because you yeah, started it's back to Square One. Thank you for watching this video. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Check out Square One, first link in the description, and I'll see you guys next week. Fuck it, dude. Am I supposed to, I supposed to just walk off as well? The idea is just <clears throat> isn't fair what they put me through because there wasn't one piece of information that says I did that.